to a lot of places I can't even pronounce, but they all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But this job sounds like a breeze. I'm flying to Macau on the China coast to spend a bunch of the taxpayers' money and hope it leads me to a counterfeiting ring out there. Yeah, it sounds like a breeze, but I've got an uneasy hunch that the breeze could turn into a cyclone with me in the middle. See anything yet? Yeah, a lot of water. <laughs> well, we ought to sight it almost any minute now. You going to be in Macau long? Well, that depends. How's that, Mitchell? Well, it depends on how they treat me. Oh, I don't think you need to worry. We like everybody in Macau, especially if they've got money. That I want to see. Well, as a matter of fact, I own a little club there, the Big Ace. Supply anything any American could ever want. If you don't see it, look me up and I'll get it for you. <laughs> well, I don't play for pleasure. Of course, if there's real dough in it, that might be different. Well, we have a little special poker game going on upstairs. High stakes. Here compliments to Jeff Larson. That'll get you in any time you feel lucky. <laughs> Who told you I had that kind of dough? Little bird. <laughs> We're landing in 10 minutes. We're landing in 10 minutes. <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Regulations forbid the smoking of cigars. Oh. <laughs> okay. What's this all about? You are Steve Mitchell. That's right, but you've got nothing on me. You will come with us and come quietly. Nice, friendly ah. place for town. Sit down. All right, you may go. Steve, good to see you <laughs> at last. Good to see you, Francesca. That was quite a reception you gave me. Well, that's the way you wanted it. How did you do with Larson? Oh, fine. We're practically buddies. He invited me to sit in on a game at the Big Ace. Gave me a ticket. Good. <laughs> what makes you think that Larson is the head of this whole counterfeiting setup? Everything points to it. Steve, I have raided the Big Ace half a dozen times, besides every other point in the area. And every sign points to Larson. But I can't pin anything on him just because some counterfeit money happened to be floating around his club. You picked up quite a lot, didn't you? Yes, a lot of money changes hand in Macau. Counterfeit bill here and there doesn't mean much. Yeah, but a quarter of a million phony simoleons dumped all over the Orient in the last six months isn't hay. In this part of the world, a piece of paper with George Washington's picture on it is worth its weight in gold. People don't ask questions, they grab. Yeah, don't forget Lincoln and Andrew Jackson. They don't like the way their phony pictures have been plastered all over the Orient either. We've got to find those printing presses and Larson with them. That's the only thing that'll do the trick. Yeah. I'll put two of my men on you in case. No, no, Francesco. We've got one lead now. Let's not lose it. But these men are in my special detail. Nobody else in the department knows you are here. Okay, well, tell them to take it easy. All right, give me my blue chip and I'll be on my way. Where are you going? I'm uh, going to lose a couple of thousand dollars if I have good luck. <laughs> Come on. Wait a minute, you. Sorry, Plastic. I don't like to be shoved. I walk slowly up to it. A nice, cozy poker game. The only thing American about it is the cards and the face.
faces watching them flip around the table could have been from anywhere from Vladivostok to Hanoi, except Sam, the house cashier. He looks strictly out of Chicago via Las Vegas, and Maya, the house dealer. She could be out of anywhere. The kind of beauty that you sometimes find in the East, but comes from the West. She sits there dealing like a stone idol, just as hard, just as cool, and just as absolutely placid. She doesn't flicker an eyelash at me. Nobody does. As far as they're concerned, I'm just some more cigarette smoke floating around the room. I look around, not a trace of Larson. And 200 more. Fair deuces. Nice going in any league, sister. Bluffing a full house with a pair of skinny deuces. You here to watch, mister? Well, so far, nobody's asked me to do anything else. Here's a place. Nice and warm. Thanks. That's no good here. But Larson said... American game, we use American money. slide out of her fingers like she's trained every one of them. Somewhere around here is something I'm looking for, but where and when will I find it? That's 200. Table is raising 200. I'll see you. Raise another 200, just to make it interesting. Cards? I'll play these. You can light a cigar with this. No good to me. real money. That does it. I have a feeling Sam doesn't like me anymore. Maya's eyes are beginning to blister the skin off my cheekbones. It's a nice warm feeling. Well, that cleans me. That's for you, Maya. Nice dealing. Buster, no hard feelings. Look good, but all these bills have the same serial number. You better go after him, Sam. Well, it's about time for me to have a couple of visitors, I guess. That's one part of my job I don't relish, but every once in a while I just have to take it. Add a couple of lumps to my collection on my head. Oh, oh, here we go. Smart guy who don't like to be shoved. Mr. Mitchell, it's you. Have a chair. Mr. Mitchell, I asked you back on account of a slight irregularity. Earlier this evening, you stopped in my little club and sat in a friendly poker game and lost $3,000. All of it counterfeit? Now, we can't operate business on a basis like that. Well, it looks like you're doing all right. Yes, but we wouldn't stay in business long if all of my clients insisted upon using stuff like that. What's wrong with it? He didn't kick. Certainly better than that stage money he tried to slip me. Why, well, I know a kid in public school Brooklyn, 22, in art class, can turn out better queer than that. What about it, Sam? I don't know, boss. Somebody must have slipped me a counterfeit pen and it got mixed in. Counterfeit? 
Why, that stuff you tried to palm off on me was so queer that a Chinese horsefly wouldn't light on it. Here, take a look at that. That's as good as any E pluribus unum you ever held in your hand. Even the eagle doesn't know the difference. With the setup you got here, that's as good as the money in your pocket. It's still falling to me. Now, Mitchell, let's get back to our original business. You owe me 3,000 good American dollars. You mean the kind that Uncle Sam makes all by himself? I couldn't put it any better myself. Well, if you can give me a couple of days. I think we can give you a couple of days. Thanks. And Mr. Mitchell. That little brush you had with the police, what were they after? Oh, they thought I had a rabbit in my hat. And? They found I didn't have a rabbit, so they gave me back my hat. He's right. That's the best job I ever saw. Maya. I want to find out how much of that stuff there is around, who makes it and where. See what you can dig up. But Larson, this Find out if they got the plates. I can use stuff like this. I need it. I need it badly. Now you get it. I'm sorry for what happened, Steve. Oh, skip it. You no, know, I was thinking about you. So soon? <laughs> you made quite an impression on me, too, last night. Oh, I'm sorry. It was business. Yeah. Oh, don't blame me too much, Steve. You don't know how hard it is for a woman to get a good job along the China coast. <laughs> how hard it is to keep it. You make the same kind of a pitch to all your ex-customers? Just to you. You know, I still like the way you deal. I'll call you on that. Why? Sometimes a woman has to play her cards on the table face up. OK. I'll play mine the same way. What is it you like best, the color of my money or me? Both. If you'd said anything else, I'd have folded my tent and snuck away. <laughs> I'm too honest to do anything else. I'm going to take a chance on that. I've got work to do. How'd you like to tag along with me while I make 3,000 bucks? I'd love it. Here's your change as you requested. American money. Thank you. That one. Can I have that one? Sure. Don't bother to wrap it. Would you change that 100? Okay. I think we're being followed. Yeah, I know. It's Sam. Wait a minute, Mitchell. Wait a minute. Oh, Sam. Why, if I'd have known it was you, I'd have laid out the red carpet. Maya, looks like your bookkeeper doesn't trust you. You better take him home. Larson might worry. I'm sorry, Sam. See you later. You stupid ox. Seven hundred ten, seven twenty, seven thirty. That's Steve Mitchell can sure cover ground. Well, Francesco, how'd you do? The man who followed you picked up seven hundred and thirty dollars. Counterfeit. <laughs> right on the nose. Have any trouble? Well, Larson put a guy on my tail, see that I wouldn't leave town while I owed him 3,000 bucks. Which means? Which means I got a fish on my hook, but I don't know whether it's the big shark yet or not. And if and when will you decide? I could tell you that better if I was in Larson's office right now. What was the idea of having Sam follow me? I even check up on myself, honey. I think this Mitchell's a pretty smart operator. We wouldn't want him to think that you were being friendly to him just because I said so, would we? We were getting along fine. Ask Sam, he'll tell you. Yeah, Sam says you were getting along a little too fine. Why don't you say what you mean? Well, honey, you've always had a yen to go into business for yourself. I think it would be a great mistake. Now, let's say that this is my way of expressing to you it would be extremely unfortunate. You're worth your weight in gold was. He's got plenty of the stuff. He kicks it around like an oil man. Nobody stops to take a second look. Has he got the plates? I don't know. He didn't give me a chance to find out. He didn't uh, drop anything offhand like. Said he was never broke. Well, he's got him. 
And I want them. Hello. Oh, uh, just a minute. I'll see if she's around. Hello, speaking. Oh, hello, Steve. No, no, I'm all right. No, I can talk. Uh-huh. Anywhere you say, what time? Okay, I'll meet you there. Bye. Larson had it figured out right, didn't he, honey? Now that's your in, Maya. You make it easy, I'll vote you in for a nice bonus. Okay, boss. And don't forget that Larson figures out the details. And don't overplay it. I think she was right. You and I'd make a great combination. I get a kick myself for running out on you. Mm. Glad you got my phone call when you did. And if I hadn't picked it up? If I thought he'd have laid a hand on you, I'd have busted the joint wide open. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. What did he want with you? Well, he was sore. He figured that I was after your money and he wouldn't get his 3000 He'll get it. You can tell him from me, you'll get it tomorrow. I'll tell him. How'd you ever get mixed up with him? I didn't. He got mixed up with me. I was just a hard-working girl struggling to make a dishonest buck. And? He showed me how to make two. How'd you like to make five? <laughs> Who wouldn't? String along with me? You mean all that money you've been flashing? Pardon a girl's natural curiosity, but how long can that go on? As long as I wanted to. You know, that Club of Larson's is a pretty nice setup. I've got an idea that he's a competitor. He wouldn't know where he spends his extra time, would you? I'm just a hard-working girl. Or if he is a competitor. All I do is run his big game. Well, a guy in my business just has to be sure of his way around, you know. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, I think I'll go change my shirt and we'll get out of here. This place is beginning to close in on me. Just straightening out the books. <laughs> a couple of old plates of a home of mine. Oh. I carry them along for luck. Let's go. Oh, May, I just remembered something. Wait for me down in the lobby, will you? I want to get some dope. I'll be right down. Sure you'll have everything straight? Sure. All right, show him in. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, good to see you again. Larson, there you are. 3,000 hard-earned simoleons. Ah, $3,000 in three days. That's pretty good pay anywhere. It seems to be all right. That settles your account with us completely. Not quite. How about my original 3,000? Oh, yes, of course. Your deposit. Here you are. That's good stuff. That's better than good. Well, I'll be seeing you. Uh, Mitchell. I've had my eye on you for two or three days. 
Yeah, I know you have. You know, for a man as bright as you are, I don't think you operate very smartly. You don't? Anyone who has a goose that lays money like that can make a lot of money. Oh, I do pretty good. Why, pin money. I know a man could double and triple that take. You wouldn't have to touch a single bill. If what? If you had the plates to go with the job. Well, that's very interesting. Do you got the plates? Oh, could be. I'll tell you what you do, Larson. You tell this uh, somebody to get in touch with me. I always like to listen to a good story. Well, you are in touch. I know a man can spread two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of that stuff up and down this coast, just like you spread butter on a hot day. Mm -hmm. And he cuts you in for 20 percent. Well, you tell the head man that I'll consider 50 percent. Well, he might make it 25. Now, you be smart. You can't operate the way you're going. They'll catch up with you sooner or later. And with us, it's candy all the way. Mm. Well, I'll think it over. I'll give it to five o'clock. Oh, wait a minute. I can't think that fast. You will, or you won't operate. Well, what if I don't want to play it your way? Then you won't operate at all. We can't have penny ante competition in our business. We put so many cops on your track that the stuff that you make won't be worth the papers written on. You know, back in the States, we call that squealing. It wouldn't take a man who's smart two seconds to pick up a proposition like this. Well, it's my first big deal, so I'll think about it till five o'clock. If anything happens to those plates, don't blame us. I won't. Nice try, Stevie. I don't think you'll need this anymore. Well, May, I thought you and I... <laughs> You're sweet, Stevie, but much too gullible. And green is a color I could never resist. Here it is, boss. What is it? Do you know what this is? Well, he told me there were plates of his old home, but we... Look at it. Five after five. I'd have made it sooner, but I was held up. Yeah? Yeah. You know, that proposition you made me, Mr. Larson, I've been thinking about it. I don't like the way you cut the deck. I'll take 50% or nothing. Well, I know a smart operator when I see one, it's a deal. The sooner we get those plates, the sooner we get action. Good. Where do I bring them? I'll wait right here for you. All right, I'll see you in half an hour. And don't try and tail me this time. Oh. I'll take these. They always bring me luck. Thanks, Francesco. Now, this may be it, so don't crowd me. Here, you might need this. You know I don't like artillery. It's too heavy. It slows me down. You better take it. One does not thrust his head into the mouth of a dragon without a thing of his own. Hey, that's pretty good, Francesco. Confucius? No. J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that looks more like it. Come on, let's go. Where? Well, we can really see what we've got. Pete, look at the plates I told you about. Take a look at them. They're pretty good, huh? We'll get no kickback from that. Where'd you get them? My friend, Mr. Mitchell here. He's no friend, he's a copper. What? Are you nuts? Aren't these plates good enough for you? Mister, they're too good. 
All those plates there are an Eddie Green job. One of the team men nabbed him and those plates in the Bronx just two years ago. I guess that does it, Mitchell. Quite a busy man. Yeah, Francisco. Well, here it is. I guess that'll take care of your counterfeit ring. Oh? Yeah. Mm-mm. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> 